Renaissance Italy was a dualistic landscape with a flourishing culture headed by da Vinci, Michelangelo, Donatello, and the territorial squabbles between noblemen, bourgeoisie, and the clergy. Power, ambition, and art were ultimately bound up with each other. Italy, not a country at the time, was divided into duchies, principalities, papal states, and the kingdoms of Naples and Sicily, all of which battled for more land and power. Cesare's father, Rodrigo Borgia, was from a middle noble family in Valencia, Spain. But after the election to the papacy of Alonso Borgia, who was coronated as Callistus III, the family achieved great prestige. Rodrigo was made a cardinal in Rome, from which point he worked his way up through the Vatican until he ascended to the papacy in 1492, when he was crowned Alexander VI. It seems almost bizarre to know that a pope had a son, but Cesare was not the only. Rodrigo Borgia not only reproduced biologically, but he also passed his name on. Yes, he wanted to start a family even though he was a clergyman. His primary mistress was Venoza de Catane, who was 10 years younger than Rodrigo. She was the mother of his four most famous children, Cesare born in 1475, Giovanni in 1476, Lucrezia in 1480, and Geoffrey in 1481. From childhood, Cesare was brought up to serve his ambitious father's power, as was his sister, Lucrezia. His story is both engrossing and, at the same time, appallingly cruel. His life is the mirror image of a family embroiled in intrigue. A family saga plunged into corruption and power theft at any cost. This was the brilliant atmosphere and upbringing that influenced Cesare Borgia. Undoubtedly, he was a brilliant student because all this ghoulish investment paid off. Cesare Borgia went down in history as a symbol of immorality, conspiracy, and limitless cruelty. His father knew how to shape perfectly this illegitimate son who would inspire the character of Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince. The Pope's son received an outstanding humanist education, taught to read and write in Greek and Latin, enabling him to read the works of Cicero, Julius Caesar, Tacitus, Herodotus, Thucydides, etc. He was also physically trained, playing sports, learning to hunt, ride, and fight. Through such training, he managed to become a fighter. One can say that the boy enjoyed the art of war much more than preaching. He entered the University of Perugia in 1489, and in that same year, thanks to his father, he was elected Bishop of Pamplona in Spain. Only because of his age, he did not take office immediately. He still went to the University of Pisa to study law. The year 1492 was dramatic, Pope Urban VIII died, and the conclave was about to have a great dispute. Initially, five cardinals submitted their names to the contest, but the election was polarized between Giovanni della Rovere and Rodrigo Borgia. Due to financial help from Ascanio and Ludovico Sforza, Rodrigo Borgia was elected. He was the second Borgia elected pope. With the election of Alexander VI, Cesare's life took a new turn. Giovanni did not demonstrate the aptitude and maturity to hold ecclesiastical positions, but Cesare, while he was a snobbish, arrogant, and pompous man, was nevertheless an instructed individual, educated in canon and civil law, capable of holding administrative offices, since bishops, archbishops, and cardinals were primarily in charge of bureaucratic matters, leaving preaching to the priests. The Pope succeeded, a month after his election, in having his son made Archbishop of Valencia, and then Cardinal, at the age of 18, one of the youngest bishops in the Catholic Church. Giovanni, his older brother, eventually took over the Pope's armies. However, in 1493, territorial struggles would shake the Italian peninsula. The French King Charles VIII joined Ludovico Sforza, and together they planned an invasion of Naples. The Pope expressed no interest in supporting this invasion, and on December 31, 1494, King Charles' 30,000-strong French army besieged Rome. The Pope was sheltered in the Castel San Angelo. The Pope offered the French king a deal to seal the peace and said that Cesare could be his hostage as long as he was on Italian soil. 
The Pope's son followed the French king to Naples, where the French pillaged the city. While back in Rome, Pope Alexander VI secretly sent letters soliciting support from Florence, Venice, Spain, and the Holy Roman Empire. He eventually received a reply, and so the Holy League was formed, 1495. Very clever, Cesare managed to escape from Naples, and when he arrived in Rome, he assembled an army of Spanish mercenaries that eventually defeated the French in the capital. Confronted with a difficult situation, mutiny, and an outbreak of syphilis among the soldiers, the French king decided to return to his country. The ensuing years were quiet for Cesare and his father, but on June the 16th, 1497, the most terrible thing happened. Mysteriously, Alexander VI's favorite son, Giovanni, was murdered. His remains were left in the Tiber River. His throat was cut, defaced by eight stab wounds with a dagger. The Pope suffered a blow. He would have done anything to get his beloved son back. A long list of suspects was made as the Borgia, after almost five years of pontificate, had many enemies. To this day, Giovanni's murder remains a mystery and has never been solved. With Giovanni's death, Cesare ended up gradually taking his brother's place. He had been the person who profited the most from this family tragedy. Soon the word spread that the real murderer of Giovanni was Cesare himself. The counter to this theory is that Alexander VI would never have condoned such an act. While he was a cardinal, holding an important position at that time, Cesare never wanted to wear the sotane. Upon his brother's death, he suggested to his father to renounce the cardinal's office and all other ecclesiastical positions, taking over the reins of the family's political and military affairs. On August the 20th, 1498, following pressure from the Pope, the cardinals recognized the resignation of Cesare Borgia, Cardinal of Valencia. This shocked the Christian community at the time, as Cesare had been the first cardinal to ask for resignation. Liberated from the Sotain and ecclesiastical life, Cesare could marry, and soon an opportunity emerged. French King Charles VIII eventually died in 1498, and Louis XII took his place. The new king had been married a long time and had no children. He intended to reverse his marriage and marry the widow of his predecessor, Anne of Brittany. However, to do this, he needed the Pope's support. Soon an agreement was reached. The French king appointed Cesare as Duke of Valentinois and gave him guarantees of military support for his hoped for conquests in Italy. Not only did Cesare further strengthen his alliance with France by marrying a noble woman from his court, Charlotte d'Albret, from this union the couple had only one daughter, Louise d'Albret Borgia. With a small army now under their control, but with the direct support of the king of France, Cesare and Louis XII arrived in northern Italy as early as 1499 and started the French king's plans to take over the Duchy of Milan. On October 6, 1499, the French army entered the city of Milan, which fortunately for King Louis XII was defenseless and offered no resistance. The Duke of Milan, Ludovico Sforza, upon becoming aware of the French army's march, decided to go into exile and followed his family to Austria. The Milanese who did not want to submit to French rule also left for other nations, which included Leonardo da Vinci, at the time a protégé of Duke Sforza. Following the conquest of Milan, Caesar got in touch with his father, and together they decided to pursue the plan of territorial conquest. The target, in this case, would be the province of Romagna, one of the most powerful and rebellious of the Papal States. The Pope's intention was not only to secure the allegiance of these provinces and their masters, but also to seize them for the Borgia family. Accordingly, Cesare's first target was the city of Forli, then one of the most important towns in Romagna under the rule of Catherine Sforza, 1462-1509, a strong-tempered, domineering, snobbish, and severe woman. Cesare's army encircled Forli as late as December 1499, he initially threatened her with surrender, but prideful Catherine refused to submit to any order from a Borgia. The siege then began and lasted less than a month. The pride of an army to counterattack 
and of the support of her citizens. Catherine had to surrender in January 1500 and was arrested by Caesar and deprived of her cities. Cesare's conquest was well underway until he received news that Ludovico Sforzo was heading back to Milan in an attempt to recover the city. Halfway there, he decided to stop in Rome to meet his family. According to legend, Cesare's triumphal march into the Eternal City on February 26, 1500 profoundly astonished the ambassadors at the papal court. Gone was the flamboyant young man with whom they were all used to. In his place was now an austere and secretive politician and military figure. Cesare was dressed in a simple black velvet suit that emphasized his features more dramatically than his earlier colorful silks. Henceforward, black was born as Cesare's favorite color. Cesare is often remembered in history for his strictness with enemies and foes alike. However, many of these cases were magnified by his enemies. Some people say that he eventually killed his brother-in-law, Alfonso of Aragon, the second husband of Lucrezia Borgia. After the recapture of Milan, Cesare resumed his plans to capture Romagna. Over the next months of 1500 and 1501, with an army of 10,000 men, Cesare claimed several victories. On May the 15th, 1501, Alexander VI appointed his son Duke of Romagna, his second major noble rank. Cesare spent a few months from 1502 to 1503 managing his dukedom to make it a model state for all of Italy, a feat that impressed Machiavelli, who adopted as an example for his model prince. Differently from what one might imagine, Machiavelli did not rebuke the violence used by Cesare to achieve his ends. According to him, a prince ought to seek power and order through lawful means. Nevertheless, if the use of force and fear were necessary, such means would not be discarded, as the main objective was to maintain order in the state, even if severely. After conquering Romagna, Cesare followed the French king in the conquest of Naples. The Borgias were even more powerful than ever at the end of 1501. But Cesare's ambition was relentless. He eventually conquered Urbino when he was only 27 years old. On July the 24th, 1502, the highly regarded Niccolo Machiavelli met the ambitious, proud, and powerful Cesare Borgia, who would become regular news in several of Machiavelli's writings. Describing his first impression of Cesare, Machiavelli wrote, This gentleman is certainly very splendid and magnanimous. In war there is no enterprise so large that it does not seem small to him. In seeking territories and glory, he never relaxes or acknowledges danger. He reaches one place before they know he has left from another. He is popular among his soldiers and has assembled the best men in Italy. These things make him triumphant and wonderful, particularly when you add them to his perpetual good fortune. The encounter between the two was not merely coincidental. Machiavelli had been looking for Cesare to strike a deal. He wanted to keep neutrality between Florence and the cities under the control of the Pope's son. Another prominent figure of that time of Cesare's was Leonardo da Vinci. He was hired to redesign and fortify the city of Urbino. He was also to draw military maps and devise weapons. Unlike Machiavelli, Leonardo da Vinci recounted in his diaries that he did not enjoy working with Cesare Borgia at all. By mid-1503, Cesare Borgia was at the head of Romagna, Urbino, and the March, conquering these states in about 10 months. This stunned other Italian leaders at the time, some with decades of experience in politics and warfare, who had not been able to do even half of what Cesare had done in less than a year. However, the world takes many turns. After 11 years as Pope, Alexander VI contracted a serious illness, which also afflicted Cesare Borgia. The young man managed to recover, but the aging pope died on August the 18th, 1503, aged 72. His burial took place at the Spanish National Church of Santiago in Montserrat, and his successor was Pope Pius III. While the reason for his death is not known for certain, owing to the period in which it occurred, the two most likely hypotheses are poisoning or malaria. His father's great support was lost, and Cesare embarked on a race against time to prevent his fall soon thereafter. 
While Cesare was lying in bed, recovering from his illness, his enemies quickly rallied and proceeded to reclaim their cities. Only the French king was left, but he was slow to dispatch reinforcements. Nevertheless, Cesare managed to persuade several cardinals at the end of September to elect Francesco Piccolomini as pope, who took the name of Pius III. The new pope was a Borgia supporter, despite being 63 years old and in poor health. Pius III appointed Cesare the captain general of the papal armies, which granted Cesare the authority and troops to retake his dominions. But fortune was no longer with him. Pius III's papacy lasted only 32 days, and after his death, Cesare lost command of the papal armies. Julius II, the new pope, an old enemy of Pope Alexander VI, was quick to declare the arrest of Cesare Borgia. The Pope was resolved to bring an end to the Borgia dynasty. Cesare was imprisoned for months under a sort of house arrest. In April 1504, he was granted freedom, but lost almost all of his territories. Looking to recover them, he decided to head for Naples to join forces with the Spanish. This was a very dangerous, daring, and unusual plan, since they were his old enemies, but Cesare was well known for taking risks, being ambitious and unexpected in his measures. Upon order of the Spanish king, Cesare was arrested in Naples and brought captive to Spain, being held in the mountainous fortress of Cinchilla, Valencia. He attempted to escape in 1505, using a rope made of bedsheets, but eventually fell and injured one of his arms and his shoulder. However, due to his escape attempt, the Spanish king ordered his transfer from prison, sending him to the castle of La Mota in the city of Medina del Campo. The castle was rumored to be one of the best prisons in Spain at the time. Cesare remained in prison there for more than a year. The man was stubborn and did not want to die a prisoner. On the night of October 25th, 1506, he managed to escape. Once he was free, he fled to Navarre, the kingdom of his brother-in-law. In December 1506, Cesare arrived in the city of Pamplona, capital of the small kingdom of Navarre, nestled in Spain. While there, he was welcomed by his brother-in-law, hoping to coax him to join his aims. This time around, he wanted to attack the Low Countries region, but his plans were delayed when a rebellion broke out in Navarre. To help the king, Cesare volunteered his services to crush the insurgents. During the first battle, however, the Pope's son was taken by surprise. Cesare continued the fight, only to be killed by some of the knights. He is said to have been knocked from his horse with a spear blow and then pierced 23 times, which led to his death. Cesare Borgia died on March the 12th, 1507, at the age of 32. They took off all his clothes and left him naked with a stone over his feet. His remains were buried in the church of Santa Maria in Viana, Navarre.